we'll use the constraint equations to develop a forward kinematic solution and an inverse kinematic solution for this example robot. We have a robot chassis with two fixed standard wheels and one spherical wheel, which or a caster wheel, and this wheel imposes no constraints on the motion of the robot. This is known as a differential drive robot. Uh, here is just a little place where I scribbled out something, and you can see that in a couple of other places. So this these the sheet is posted as a PDF. So look for that just in case some of this notation is too small to read in the video. We're going to look at this robot and work on and then discuss the forward kinematic solution and then the inverse kinematic solution. So we need the constraint matrix. We're going to use the constraint equation, which is shown here. So we have C is the con coefficients of the constraint equations matrix times the Cartesian velocity, so x dot, y dot, and theta dot expressed in the robot frame. Product of those two is equal to this vector, where we have w times phi dot vector and the zero vector. So this is a column vector. It depend, its size depends on the number of wheels you have. It's, it has number of rows, two times the number of wheels, and it's one column. That's if your wheels are standard, fixed standard wheels. So the coefficients of the constraint equations come from the parameters locating the wheels in the robot frame. We see here that wheel 1 is on the negative x-axis and wheel 2 is on the positive x-axis. Each one is the same distance from the origin and each one has the same radius. So L1 is equal to L2 and R1 is equal to R2. Wheel 1 is on the negative x-axis, so alpha 1 is pi. And we'll say that a positive wheel rotation would move the robot origin in the positive robot y direction. So this is the direction of positive wheel rotation. So let's say this vector represents positive wheel rotation. If we rotate it by alpha is pi, so a positive wheel rotation for wheel 1 would go in this direction, so that means that it would move the origin in the positive y direction. So alpha 1 equals pi and beta 1 equals 0. So by when alpha 1 is 0, positive wheel rotation is like this, and then we rotate the wheel, we spin it around by pi, and now our positive wheel rotation faces this way. So that's why we have alpha 1 is pi and beta 1 is 0, because positive wheel rotation ends up pointing in the moving the robot origin in the positive y direction. For wheel 2, it's on the positive x-axis, so alpha 2 equals 0, and in that configuration our positive wheel direction points like this, and so rotation in that direction would look like my hand is showing, and this would result in the origin of the robot moving in the negative robot y direction. So we need to rotate the wheel rotation direction. So alpha, one, alpha 2 is 0 and beta 2 is pi, and now wheel 2 is going to rotate so that the robot origin moves in the positive robot y direction. Alpha 1 is pi, beta 1 is 0, alpha 2 is 0, beta 2 is pi. And we can go ahead and fill in the C matrix. And here it is in two blocks, CP and CN. CP would be the coefficients from the motion from the wheel constraints governing motion in the wheel plane direction. In other words, the rolling constraint equations. Cn would, would be the coefficients from the constraints relating motion in the direction normal to the wheel plane, or the no sliding constraint. And from an earlier video, we know that the Cp terms are sine alpha plus beta, negative cosine alpha plus beta, and negative L cosine beta. So here we're using alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 1, beta 1, and beta 1. And on the second row we have cosine of alpha 
plus beta, alpha 2 plus beta 2. I'm sorry, this is sine of alpha 2 plus beta 2. Negative cosine of alpha 2 plus beta 2 and L times cosine of beta 2. Hopefully that wasn't dark for too long. For the no sliding constraint coefficients, we have cosine of alpha 1 plus beta 1, sine of alpha 1 plus beta 1, and L times sine of beta 1. And then here, this is for wheel 2. We're going to use this coef um, constraint equation. And so you see we also need the W matrix. W is just a diagonal matrix made up of the wheel radii. In this case, they're both equal and they're R. So to solve the forward kinematics equation, that's the scenario where we have the wheel speeds. We know the wheel speeds and we know the robot parameters, so W and C. And we want to find the Cartesian velocity, so we want to assign x dot, y dot, and theta dot. And in this case, that's expressed in the robot frame. So here we have psi dot r, which is x dot r, y dot r, theta dot is equal to, and we're going to left multiply both sides by the pseudo inverse of C. So it's equal to C pseudo inverse times R phi 1 dot R phi 2 dot 0 0. So that's just this vector here. Or if we wanted to find the velocity of the robot expressed in the world frame or the inertial frame, then we just need to transform that vector psi dot r into this coordinate system. So to do that, we multiply by the inverse of the rotation matrix. And I believe, yeah, so here's the rotation matrix, and we need to multiply by the inverse of that uh, times psi dot r in order to get psi dot i. So that's the forward kinematics problem, where you're given the wheel speeds and then the robot parameters, W and C, and you want to find the Cartesian velocity, psi dot i or psi dot r. And then the inverse kinematics, we're still going to use this same equation. We will just use this part of it because we're given the velocity in the inertial frame, psi dot i, y dot y i dot and theta dot. I'm sorry, so x i dot, y i dot, and theta dot. And we know the orientation of the robot frame relative to the world frame, so we know theta. And we want to find the wheel speeds. So we're just going to use the top, in this case, two rows of this equation. So we're going to take cp times r times psi dot i is equal to w times phi dot, and we'll left multiply both sides by w inverse. And that gives us this equation for solving the inverse kinematics. The phi dot vector is defined as phi 1 dot and phi 2 dot, and that's just w inverse times cp times r times psi dot i. So this, these two solutions come from an understanding of how the constraint coefficient matrix is defined, that is how the definitions of alpha and beta, and then manipulating this constraint equation in order to determine different unknowns, either psi dot for the forward kinematics or phi dot for the inverse kinematics.